If you have a 9th gen Toyota Corolla and you're looking to install some LED lights, then you're in luck. Today I'll be showing you how to swap every single light bulb in your car to an LED. I do also want to mention that even if you're not interested in swapping any of your lights to LED and you just want to replace some burnt out light bulbs, this video should be able to help you out with that as well. Let's get to it. So first things first, I'm going to have to figure out whether I want to do the interior or the exterior first. And to do that, I'm going to flip a coin. But since I don't actually have a coin, I have to ask Siri for one. Hey Siri, flip a coin. It's heads. Looks like we're doing the interior first. So the first bulb we're going to replace is right up here. Since my car has a sunroof, it's got a little uh light right up here what we're gonna do is take out this little screw holding in this entire assembly and then you just go ahead and pop it out and this is the bulb that we're dealing with right up here so what we need to do is push it in twist it up and out she comes so I have all my lights here marked out. So example, this one is dome SR, which means dome sunroof. And here we go. Open it up, take the bulb out. Now what we wanna do before we put this in is just make sure that these two look the same. Uh, my camera doesn't wanna focus and I've been trying for the past two minutes. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and just tell you that these are the same. Let's go ahead and pop the new LED in. Pop it in, twist it. Now if it doesn't work on the first try, it probably means that the polarity is bad, but it is good here. So now that we know that the light actually works, we're gonna pop the cover back on and we're gonna put this screw back into place. And there we go. So that's the first dome light complete. And now we're gonna move on to the second dome light. So this dome light is just clipped in. So all I need to do is just stick a flathead screwdriver under there and I guess not pop it off. You can also just use your fingers. How is it this difficult? This one, I guess, is a little different. So it looks like you just pop it out of the headliner. That's unlike the one that I've done before. And you pop it in from the top. Unbox the new LEDs. This is what this bulb looks like. And now we pop it in. So just like that. So this should hopefully work now. Now, unlike my Corolla LE, this one doesn't actually have any sort of switch to turn it on and off. So I'm assuming if I open the door, it'll come on. Kind of interesting, but anyway, let's just go ahead and clip that back into place. And I now have a dome light, which is nice because this has never worked since I got the car. Now you might be wondering why I went with red. Surely white dome lights would be much clearer and easier to see. And you would be 100% correct. So I went with these color lights for the interior for two reasons. One, back in the day, my friend Eli used to have a Mazda 6, which had red interior lights, and I thought it just looked really cool. So I wanted to kind of replicate that here. And two, because at night, it's gonna make the inside of this car look like a strip club, which as a college student is very exciting. Now that we've got the easy dome lights out of the way, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the control lights, which is arguably the most difficult part of this entire installation. So what we want to do is take off this entire section here. So first we have to pull up on this bottom part around the gear selector. Since mine is manual, I'm going to have to take my shift knob off in order to actually pull this out. Now for those of you with automatics, don't worry. I'm also in this video going to be showing you how to install the gear selector light for the automatic transmission. But before we get to that, we're going to finish off all of the little lights inside here. So first two screws down here, which we're going to have to take out. That's one and that's two. Now we pop this middle dial off and then take out this third screw behind it and out it comes. So now we have to find a good spot to grip it. In my case, since I'm missing my door here, I'm just gonna pull just like that. But if you still have both your doors and you'd rather not break them, you can grab a pair of pliers and grip right down here and just pull it up. Don't pull it up that hard though. It might actually break this bottom part here. And there we go. And that's the control off. Now I'm going to unplug all of these plugs on the back here and remove this whole face out. I recommend that you disconnect the battery before you actually unplug all this stuff since this is all the electrical stuff that you don't want to short anything. Emergency lights disconnected, clock is disconnected, defroster is disconnected, and that is the passenger airbag light disconnected. And for now we can just set this off to the side. So these 
are the two lights here that we're after. So what I recommend doing is grabbing a small flathead screwdriver like this, so you can reach around and actually pull that out. They look just like these lights on the top here from back there. So what we're doing is taking a flathead, inserting it, and then turning the bulb, and then we're gonna have to pop this out. We're just gonna do the same with that bulb, just like that. Oh, and this one's already come out. All right. Now, if you don't wanna reach around and try to work from back here because it's difficult and you can't see, there is a way that you can flip this to actually be able to work on it facing this way. So if we take our little screwdriver here and pop these two clips out like that, and now we can move it around a little bit. Now you can't take it out fully because there are still the mechanical connections here for the temperature and for the vent. And these are actual cables that go here. So in the past, what I've done is try to move it to the inside like this and then flip it downwards. Now I can actually see the bulb right here. There we go. That is one bulb loose. And the other bulb is in a little bit of a tight spot way back here, but it's still possible to get to. Now it's loose and out it comes. Now, obviously this isn't the exact procedure that you're supposed to do in order to take these out. So do this at your own risk. If you wanna put in the extra effort to make sure you don't damage anything, you can unplug this back wiring harness, this wiring harness, and then detach the two cables, one here and the other back here. This is just how I personally like to do it. And here they are. They're pretty itty bitty small bulbs. Oh, you have to be kidding me. Check this out. This is the original stock one, and then this is the LED aftermarket one. They're different. Look at that. Look at the size difference. Oh man, that sucks. Now, yes, this is disappointing, but with the power of editing, boom, I've got the correct bulbs here ready to be installed. Now I'm kind of running out of daylight, so I'm gonna have to do this pretty quickly. So first, since I already have an open slot up here, I'm going to just take one of these bulbs out and just try it. And there we go, this is the correct bulb size. There we go, it's working pretty well. Now I'm just gonna have to get these bulbs installed back here. And let's see if it works. And it doesn't, which means that I've installed it the wrong way around. And there we go, the light is working. Okay, let's see. Can I get this in first try? Let's find out. There we go, that's both of the lights on. Now, while I was working with that and having this thing almost upside down, uh, the bulb for the AC up here fell out. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and slap this new bulb in. Okay, and this light is not on, which means that I've installed it the wrong way. Not a big deal. Pop it out again, flip it upside down. Go on, get out, get out. It is now on. So there we go, second time's a charm. Got the polarity correct. Now, even though everything here is done, we're not fully done with all the bulbs here yet because on here you still have, well, I've taken them out now, but you still have the emergency lights, which lights up and we also have the rear window defroster which also lights up technically speaking this uh, passenger airbag light does also turn on but there's no replaceable bulbs in here so it's not really going to do us any good so i'm just going to pop that back into place so on the rear window defroster up here we have one bulb which looks like it's actually a phillips head so just uh, pop it out like this replace it with a new bulb now I've got the new bulb twisted in. Now what I'm gonna do is just plug in, oh, which one is it? And it does light up. Okay, so this one is done. Pop it back into place. Now if you're wondering how to remove this to even begin with, you just take a screwdriver right down here, you just pry it a little bit, and then it'll just pop out. It just clips into the little square down here. And then when you're done with it and you wanna put it back, there you go, just like that, and it goes back into place. Same thing goes here for the emergency light. On the bottom, we have the bulb down here. We just take it out. Don't wanna come out. Get out of there. There we go. 
So I did get lucky because these are actually two different bulbs. So for everything else I've used here, it's a T4, but it looks like on the flasher button here, this bulb is actually a T3, which are the LED bulbs I bought originally, but didn't use. It looks like I'm using these anyway. Test to see if it works. It does technically work, but it's a lot dimmer than I thought it was gonna be. That's. This is very similar to stock, despite it being an LED. And then just like the defroster, this one does clip, uh, except this time it's on the top, but it's a very similar style clip, so if you want to take it out again, you just use a screwdriver, pry it up at the back here, and then pull it out. It looks like, though, just because this doesn't seem to be any more or less clear than the stock bulb, I wouldn't even recommend replacing this one is really no difference so i'd probably just leave this one alone and that's all of these done so i'm gonna go ahead and plug everything back together froster plug back in airbag plugged in clock which doesn't work plugged in flasher plugged in there we go clipped back into place let's just do a final check just to make sure that it works and there we go these are all looking super nice all these buttons look nice so there we go that's done now we just put all the screws back into place that's one throw the dial back in which way does it go that way that's screw number two and that is screw number three throw the shift boot over it clip this back into place shift knob goes back on and it's done now let's make sure everything works I turn this on AC works Recirc works, defroster works. Yep, everything's working. It's all good. Well, except the clock, but it hasn't been working in this car for a while. Now let's head over to the LE where I can show you the map light and the gear selector. So some of you might have these optional map lights up here, which I've already converted to LED. And these are super easy. All you do is this plastic cover down here. You just find a place to pry at it, either with your fingernail or with a screwdriver. I don't think my fingernail is gonna work actually. I might, I, I'm gonna need a screwdriver for that. You just find a spot to pick at it and then, and out it comes. So now that you have this plastic cover off, the bulb just sits right in there. I'm just gonna pop the cover back in. And that is how you do these map lights. Also, unlike in the XRS, this one has a dome light that has this kind of switch on it. Now mine currently doesn't work. I think the bulb went bad, so I'm gonna have to replace that and this one should just pop out as well i don't know why this is happening you should be able oh there you go you should be able to just pop the uh plastic cover off just like that okay i don't know why i was struggling with this so much but it'll just pop out like that so it's exactly the same like in the xrs except this one just has this extra switch here there you go just out with the old i think my camera just caught my bulb it did <laughs> Oh wow, so my camera not only doubles as a camera, but it'll also just catch things too. That's very cool. New one just pops in, does it work? And it works, nice. Now we just pop the cover back into place. And the last light I wanna discuss in this car is the automatic gear selector light. Obviously my XRS is manual, so it doesn't have this, but my LE is an automatic. So I'm just gonna pop this around out now there's four tabs one two three and four take a screwdriver and just pop a little bit at these tabs here until i can get them to pop out now it's loose and the bulb is in there which again i've obviously changed to led and that's how you do the automatic gear selector it's very easy you just pop the old one out put the new one in and Slip this back over and just press it in back up and over and Just like that and that takes care of all of the interior lights So let's go ahead and finish off the exterior lights in the XRS Ooh, I need to clean out my trunk So I don't know if you want to count this as an interior or exterior light But basically we have this trunk light in here. We just pull that tab a little bit that comes down may take a little bit of convincing to get it to come out. Who said you can't use scissors on a light bulb? Uh -huh. And this one is red too. 
Um, I don't know why, I just thought it would look cool. Where did my light bulb go? Ah, there it is, right next to the plenum. To get at the reverse lights, we just remove this cover, twist the bulb socket anti-clockwise, and pull the bulb out. Now let's take our new bulb and install it into the bulb socket. Finally, test it to make sure it works, which it does, and reverse the previous steps to reinstall everything. At this point, I'd like to invite you to play a game with me. I call it, Can You Remove the Burning Hot Light Bulb from the Car Without Injuring Your Finger? I'll go first, watch this. Ow! Okay, this was a bad idea. If I use the sleeve of my sweatshirt, I can remove it, but that's cheating. Disqualified. New bulb goes in, test functionality, and reinstall everything. Next up are the license plate bulbs. The trunk liner needs to come off, and now we can see the bulbs. Turn it clockwise, and out it comes. Out with the old, and in with the new. Test to see it works, and it does not. So we flip the light bulb, and now it works. Reinstall the bulb socket and plug it back in. And let's do the same for the other side. And lastly, the trunk liner gets reinstalled. Now in a previous video, I installed these Gen 2 LED Altus taillights, so I'm not going to be replacing the stock bulb. However, if you do have this housing, the factory housing, swapping out this bulb is extremely easy. It just twists out, and then pop it out, pull the bulb and replace it. And while I don't have a link to a bulb for that in the description down below, I do have the actual part number, so you can go searching for an LED variant of this bulb number or if you're just looking to replace it you can just find a replacement for it with the taillights that i have i'll need to remove the entire housing in order to reach the bulb not a big deal just remove three 10 millimeter nuts unplug the wiring harness and out it comes ah so here's another slight issue this bulb has this type of connector on the bottom of it whereas the regular factory bulbs are like this so Again, I need to order another set of bulbs. Now these are rear specifically, and they're also very specific to these taillights apparently. So if you don't have these taillights, then you can just get all four of these regular bulbs. It looks like I'm gonna have to go bulb hunting again. I got the right bulbs. Making sure the bulb is the right type and the new bulb goes in. As you can see, it works. Nice. Last step is to reinstall the taillight housing, and it's the same story on the other side. I just about caught my taillight with my knee before it fell. Oh man. Nice. Front turn signals are easy as well, just twist the bulb socket out of the headlight housing, take the old bulb out, and push the new bulb in. Check to make sure it works, and it does. Now let's reinstall it and do the other side. Ah, oh, man, this one's stuck in there. I'm just gonna take the whole headlight out. Taking the whole headlight out probably isn't necessary, but since I'm weak, here I am removing it so I can get more leverage on the bulb socket. And the new bulb works, so let's put this mess back together. Now that we have all four LED lights installed, you're probably seeing something like this. Oh, that speeds normally. You're probably seeing something like this. You see how quickly they flash? This does not look normal. Now this is called hyper flash, and it happens because LEDs have much less resistance than halogens do. There's a couple ways to solve this. One is to splice the wires and install load resistors, and that'll get the job done, but you have to be careful where you put load resistors because they do get very hot. Or the other easier way, which I'm gonna show you, is to install a new relay. And the one I'm showing you here, which like everything else linked in the description down below, is an adjustable relay. So you can adjust this dial here to make these turn signals flash as fast or as slow as you want. And this is how you install it. So open up your coin holder, push it together, pull it out. Now the relay that we want to replace is right here. Now this is a very difficult relay to pull out just because it's pretty just stuck in there. So what I did the last time I did the same job and what I'm gonna do this time is just pull the connector out. And the connector 
is out. And now we just need to plug this thing in. And there it is. What I decided to do is just let the relay sit here. It's not going to cause any problems. It's not like you're going to be touching it. It sits behind the coin holder. It's not really going to be doing too much. And now that we have this new relay in, let's just test to see if it works. And it does. Now it's hyper flashing, but because we have an adjustable dial, if I turn this to the left, that'll slow it down. That's a pretty normal speed. If I turn it way to the left, look at how slow that is. So I think I'm gonna turn it a little bit to the right, and that is pretty much where I want this to be. And now I'm just going to turn this on and check the individual turn signals. That looks fine. And that is also fine. Just keep in mind that these relays have just a slight delay. It's not a big deal. Let's just check out this delay. So up, and now it comes on. Small delay, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna be dangerous or anything. Replacing the fog lights is super easy. Let's remove a 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom so we can move the splash shield out of the way and then feel around for the bulb and remove it similarly to a headlight bulb. Now plug in the new bulb and as usual test it and reinstall the bulb and splash shield. And it's the same thing on the other side. Here's a better look at the 10 millimeter bolt you'll need to remove. And here's a good look at the bulb location. And that is how you swap every single light in a 9th gen Corolla from halogen to LED. I mean, minus the headlights, but those are simple enough to where if you want to do them, you can just do them. I'm not doing LED low beams in this car just because I want to do a projector retrofit before I do an LED swap. But besides that, that is every single light swapped to LED. If you want to see everything else I've ever done to either this Corolla or that Corolla, Here's a playlist to everything I've done with the XRS up until now, and here's a playlist to everything I've done to my Corolla LE up to now. And click over here to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.